Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be talking about the Yaesu FT-298R, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. My name is Curtis, my call sign is Kilo5 Charlie Lima Mike, and like I said, today we're going to be talking about the Yezu FT-2980R. It is a 2 meter mobile radio, but before we get into that, please make sure you click on that subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner, as well as the bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos. So let's go ahead and get on into the overview of this radio. Alright, so like I said, this is the Yezu FT2980R. It is a 2 meter mobile radio, and as you can see in this somewhat grainy picture here, um, it is a very sleek little radio. Uh, it has an independent volume and squelch knob and several small buttons. This radio is available on Amazon for $175.95, and there will be an affiliate link down in the description below. The frequency ranges on this radio are really nothing special. The receive is 136 to 174 megahertz, and the transmit is in the ham band at 144 to 148 megahertz. Now there are four different power, uh, power output levels on this radio. Low one is five watts, low ten is or low two is ten watts, low three is thirty watts, and the high power is a whopping eighty watts of power. So you should have not have any problem uh, getting out with this radio. Now the one thing that the drawback for this is, is there's no real indicator on anything more than just high or low power. There's really, um, you really have to know what you're looking for to, to differentiate between the low one, low two, and low three. For the low one setting, there'll be like two or three uh, bars down the S meter. For low two, there'll be like four or five. For low three, there'll be like five or six, and then high power will be the full S meter that you'll see down at the bottom. That's the, that's how you differentiate what low power level your setting is. Now there's not a cooling fan on this radio, which is really amazing for a 80 watts of output. There's no cooling fan. So you really don't have to worry about any noise or anything like that coming from it. The heat sink that's on the radio takes care of all of the power, uh, all of the heat that this radio puts off. Now there are 221 total memory channels in this radio. 200 of those are regular memory channels and then there's 10 pairs of band limit channels. Now the band limit channels are basically where you can set a low frequency and a high frequency and you can do a scan in between those uh, two sets of frequencies, or that set of frequencies. And last but not least is the home channel. Home channel is basically just a uh, way you can single press to get to a your favorite channel, your favorite repeater, the one that you own, whatever. Uh, the Just a simple one touch button to get to where you want to go quickly. The nice thing about this is you can save the power levels into the memory channel as well. So let's say like you have a repeater that's about two miles from your house, then you can set it to low power and save the memory channel and every time you switch that memory channel it'll automatically switch to low power so that's that's really nice now having 200 memory channels is a lot of memory channels and especially if you only have say 10 repeaters in your local area you can actually set up up to eight memory banks uh, with this radio so if you have only 10 repeaters that are local to your area that you can hit from your your house or your drive home or whatever, you can set those 10 channels into one bank. And then if you go out of town, you can set a different uh, bank with a different set of frequencies and then that's all you'll have to worry about uh, scanning through or looking to find the channel that you want. So the memory banks is a very nice feature as well. Now there are several scan options uh, to this radio. You have your VFO scan. The VFO scan basically will take you from your very bottom frequency to your very top frequency, so 136 to 174 megahertz. And all you have to do to start this is press the up or down button on the uh, microphone and your radio will start scanning in the direction that you press. The memory scan basically uh, functions the same way, except for it only goes through your memory channels you can uh, search from or you can scan from memory channel 1 to memory channel 200 and again you press and hold the up or down bar button on your microphone and it starts scanning in that direction. Now one of the 
uh, scan features that I didn't put on this uh, slide here is the memory skip scan. Uh, you can flag individual channels to be skipped during the memory scan. So if you have a channel that's normally busy or that you don't really particularly care to listen to all the time, you can mark it as skip and then when you do a memory, a memory scan, it will automatically skip that frequency. Now the next one is the preferential memory scan, which this one, it takes it kind of one step further. You can set your individual memory channels to where it'll say only on the screen. And it says it right, up, right above where it says 199 in this picture, I believe. And what this will allow you to do is do a scan of the entire uh, memory bank, uh, excluding the skip ones, or you can do just the only one. So if you have five frequencies that you have to listen to, let's say you're doing a net or something like that, and you have to listen to the five surrounding uh, eight uh, clubs, repeaters, or the five repeaters in your local area, you can set them to only. And then when you do your scan, if you select the channel that has only marked on it, you do your scan from there, it will only scan those that have the only uh, markings or the only settings for it. If you start on a different memory channel, then it goes through the entire thing just like the standard memory channel scan. And last but not least is the memory bank scan. Now this one will allow you to, um, you can start your uh, scan inside one memory bank and it'll only scan that memory bank. Now you can however link multiple banks together um, and if you do link those then it'll go through let's say you link uh, one and two together it'll go through the entire bank one and the entire bank two and then back to one. So you can scan multiple banks at the same time or you can just do an individual band uh, bank memory bank scan. This radio does have a built-in weather alert system as well, and this is an option that you can turn on or off. You don't have to have it on. Basically what this does is it monitors the uh, National Weather Service frequencies, and when it hears a 1050 hertz, or yeah, 1050 hertz tone, it will set off an alarm on the radio and open up the squelch of the radio so that you can hear what the weather alert is, which is really nice as well. Now before we go into this uh, enhanced paging, this radio does have the full set of CTCSS and the DCS uh, tone feature availability, I guess you could say. And it is full re uh, transmit and receive CTCSS, and the, of course the DCS is sent and receive all the time anyways. So if you set your radio to tone, you'll just be transmitting the CTCSS tone. If you set it to T squelch, the TSQL, um, it will do a send tone and it, it will only listen to uh, transmissions that have that tone in it. Now with this enhanced paging and co code squelch, the EPCS feature, it allows you to use a pair of CTCSS tones. So it, the only way that you're going to hear anything out of this radio if you have this turned on is if the frequent or the transmission that your radio is receiving has these two tones in it. Now, I don't think this feature is very reasonable, maybe, because unless you have this feature, you're never going to hear anything. Because uh, unless somebody else has this feature as well, you're never going to hear anything. Uh, unless you know, if they have it turned on, then you'll hear them. So you know, if if it, you want an added bonus of quietness if you live in a busy area then okay you can use this but they then the other person has to have it as well so I don't really foresee this feature being used very much now with that being said if any of you out there that are watching this this overview video has this radio or one that does this do you use this feature have you ever used this feature have you even did you even know it was available uh, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on the enhanced paging and code squelch feature is on these on this radio. Okay, now it does have a one button wire X uh, button connection basically. Um, after you program your radio, you press one button and you connect to your local wires X node. Now basically what this does is you program the DTMF um, sequence. Uh, the tone, whatever it is that, that is required to access your local wires X node, 
and you press one button on it, which is the I believe is the little red button here, or the red button that has the L on it. Um, you press that button, and it will send all the coding that you need, all the DTMF code you need, uh, the the CTCSS or whatever is needed to access the wired X, wires X node, and will connect to uh, connect your radio to it. So it, it makes it really nice to not have to worry about the DTMF codes all the time or when you're driving down the road you don't have to punch in a bunch of numbers on your microphone in order to get into the wires, wires X node of your local repeater or a private one or whatever. Alright and that is the Yezu FT2980R mono band 2 meter radio does the wire X does have a, a amazing 80 watts of output pretty neat little radio if you ask me. Okay, so next week we're going to be talking about the Yezu FT-60R. So make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss that video. In the meantime, check out these two videos over here and I'll see you later. 73 y'all.